So Lemonade CFO Tim Bixby said something really important in their Q3 earnings call. He said the loss ratio reported for their car product this quarter, Q3, would have been something like 10 points better if you adjust for one-time adjustments that were made. So all systems are go for car. This is really, really critical, and I want to really bang the drum on this point because I feel like we're at such an inflection point for Lemonade for the company and the stock follows the company that I feel like this is just so important to stress over and over. And make sure you watch through the whole video because I dug up a couple little nice nuggets from some previous Lemonade presentations. Now, if you look at this nice sheet from their Q3 letter, we see car loss ratio was 104% year ago. It's come down to 92%. But Tim's really saying car should be more like 82% this quarter if there wasn't wasn't for some one-time adjustments. And I was discussing all of this on X, on Twitter, with some others, and I made the point that this even this 82% number is a rear-looking number. It's looking into the past and saying, hey, currently, the whole car business right now is something like, if you exclude this one time, these certain policies, as Josh here makes a point, these were probably sold, say, two years ago and having adverse claims developments would show up in sort of the one large loss mentioned. So he's, even if you exclude that from 92% to 82%, I still think even the 82% is is a little bit conservative because that's going to include some customers that maybe haven't renewed their rates yet. So as the whole book of business renews, you'd expect this 82% number probably improves a little further. And in other words, customers that they're signing up brand new for car insurance right now are probably have a loss ratio of less than 82% would be my guess. My guess is it's probably somewhere, probably in the 70% range. I think car is definitely nearing prime time. In fact, that's even what management is saying. All systems are go for car. But what does this mean for lemonade stock? Let's quantify it a little bit, okay? I put this post out, napkin math time. Lemonade currently has 67,000 car customers, but 2.3 million total car customers. I said, I'm just making up a number, but I say, say 10% of customers cross sell to car over the next two years at an average car premium of $751. How did I know $1751? How do I know there's 67,000 car customers? You just go back to the earnings report for Q3. You can see the premium per customer and the total IFP. You can use those two numbers to get your total number of customers. You can also see that car has average of 1751 premium per customer. So that's how you can get those numbers. And you just assume, assuming 10%, assuming the next two years, that results in over 400 million of IFP gained over the next two years with no customer acquisition costs. These are just cross sales, upsells. And you might think, hey, paper bag, how do you really know it's going to be 10% of people? How do you know it's going to happen in two years? Well, of course, we don't know. There's even people in the comments here who are kind of taking one side or the other saying, hey, I think 10% is too high. Some people saying 10% is too low. The reality is no one knows 100%, but it's going to be some amount of cross-sell. And this gives us some idea of what that quantity could be. But if you go back to Lemonade Investor Day 1, two years ago, they gave us some nice nuggets on the car product. It says the highway lemonade car two things i want to point out huge pent up demand and a huge market it says a wait list and remember this is this is like 2 years ago it says a wait list at that time of over 300,000 people waiting for a car 2 years ago if we flip back to my model say november q2 or say q3 of 2022 we were at 1.7 million customers right now we're at 2.3 million customers so even significantly more customers than at that time and at that time they're saying 300,000 people are on the car wait list and they said a 25 percent conversion rate to existing customers 25% conversion rate to existing customers. Now, I don't know if that's going to hold. Maybe back at two years ago, their prices were too low and were abnormally low, and then their loss ratios were too high, And but the customers loved it because their prices were cheaper, so then they converted at a higher rate. I would wonder if that might be the case because 25% 
does seem like a little bit of a generous amount, but you never know. Maybe they even get the, you know, to something like that rate. So flipping back to my napkin math, there's lots of ways we can think about this. Maybe say, maybe say it's not two years, but maybe it takes three years to kind of roll it out and cross sell. Maybe 25, 26, 27 to the existing sort of book of business that sort of catch up to where they're at even now. Let alone on top of that, they continue to have those sort of grassroots customers come in as renters, as pet policies forever. They're going to keep doing that and then upgrading those customers. So it's not like that's going to end. But say just to catch up to where they are now, say that takes three years to roll everything out. Maybe they're just conservative. They're careful with the product. They can only sell so much so fast for regulations. Say it takes three years and they sell it to 300,000 people. And so maybe it's 100,000 customers, car customers added each year. So right now there's 67,000 car customers. Maybe next year it's 167, 267, 367. It still means if they're at 1750 per customer and you're adding 100,000 customers, it still means you're adding $175 million of IFP per year for say the next three years, just to kind of catch up with some of that pent up demand. Or say it's just 10% of customers, but it takes uh, three years to get your $400 million. Then you're still adding 130 million plus of sort of free acquired IFP each year. These are, these are really high numbers of IFP. If we flip over to my Lemonade model, again, if you want my full model, this is all available to my Patreon members. And feel free to uh, join my Patreon to get access to that. For example, say we end this year at 950 million IFP. This whole year, we only did like 200 million in IFP. So we're talking like maybe adding another 140 million extra, you know, on if we did this year over on top of it, you know, to next year and doing that for two, three years straight. These are really, really large, significant movers for the company story. And they're not going to be paying to get this growth. Because they're not going to be paying to get this growth, you can expect that the LTV to CAC ratios in the coming quarters are really, really going to explode or, or go quite a bit higher because the LTV they're generating for a certain amount of customer acquisition costs they're spending is going to greatly increase versus the CAC cost. So the overall point I'm trying to hammer home really trying to hammer home is that car is ready for prime time it's probably if you're somebody's reading this and says yeah well car it's, it's shown improvements but still 92 percent loss ratio you know it's gonna take some gonna take a few more years before they get that now nah, down no 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 that person is wrong and they're not looking at the details it's probably it's well like tim said it's closer to 82 percent right now and then my guess is new customers that they're writing are more in the 70% range. So just like management says, car is ready for prime time. Just like I've been saying for months now, 2025 will be the year of the car. Car is going to be a really, really big deal. Because I'll show in, in future videos, I'll break this out as we model out like Q4 and next year. But... Adding millions of dollars of IFP over the next few years with no customer acquisition costs attached to it, this is going to do insanely good things for the modeling. I still sort of feel like right now, this is our little secret. Maybe we can still keep it our little secret a little bit longer before the market really figures this out. But I, at some point, the broader market's going to figure this out. And we can already see that they're pushing car more heavily already in Q4. Lemonade car in Washington, for example, had really spiked in terms of Google search interest. And they also mentioned there's this car video. We were talking about it back in September in my Patreon group for Lemonade car that back in September, end of September, it had about 200,000 views and now Thomas was pointing out to me, so thanks, thank you, Thomas, for pointing this out for us. It has a million views. So in about a month, it did 800,000 views on Lemonade Car. So it's very clear that Lemonade is already pushing their car product heavily. And we'll only see this extend further. We can probably check the back, watch this video in a few months, we'll have two, three million views, something like that. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, it's in the bag.